Pathway Home. This is Matthew Allen, uh, joined by Heath Rogers this morning. Heath, thank you for joining us today. Well, good morning. I'm glad to be here. Heath uh, works with the Knollwood Church, and uh, he. Uh, we, I thought originally today that I would be in Columbia and had asked Heath to be a part of the program today in my absence, but our Columbia trip got postponed for uh, a couple reasons, and uh, we just asked Heath to uh, join us today and be here with us on the program. Thank you for joining us today. Well, I'm glad to be here, Matt. I appreciate it so much. I appreciate what you're doing here, and I've enjoyed spending time with you what time we can, and I'm glad to come over and help out. Well, uh, your pathway home is a work of the Kettering Church of Christ, and we would love to have you be our guest today at the Kettering Church. We'll meet at 4600 Bigger Road. We're just about five minutes off of I-675, exit 7. We'd love to have you come and be a part of us today. We'll meet at 9.30 for our Bible classes. We'll have a children's devotional at 9.30, followed by Bible classes for adults as well as kids of all ages at 9.45. And then at 10.45, we'll come together for praise, prayer, and preaching. And today I'm going to be preaching out of Mark chapter 10. We'll be talking about Jesus and being a servant for all. Hope you can join us today for that. The Kettering Church is also on the web at KetteringChurch.com. You, there you can find out all kinds of good information about the church, who our leadership is, what our vision is for our planning and going forward in the future. We hope that you can find out more about us there. Well, Heath, um, as we, we get started on our, our, uh, our theme today is what we're talking about. We're going to be looking out of Psalm 39 today. Uh, talking about some marks of maturity for God's people. Um, this is actually, I think, an outline that you put together several years ago that I had on my computer, and I wanted to uh, just kind of go over that this morning. And sure. obviously, we want to remind our, our viewers this morning that uh, we're live on Facebook, and if you have a Bible question, Bible comment, uh, maybe uh, something that comes up with uh, what we're talking about here this morning that you can uh, participate with us. Uh, you can uh, type in on the comment uh, bar below on the bottom of your screen. You can send us an email. Our email address is yourpathwayhome at kettering.church or you can call us the old-fashioned way. Uh, the area code 937-434-8481. Again, 937-434-8481. Well, Heath, as we think about marks of maturity and what Christians have been encouraged by God to do, I, I, you know, I, I think sometimes as Christians we, we wind up kind of in a, in a, in a mode where we just kind of drift. And we just kind of take things for granted like things are just going to go on the way they are indefinitely. And over and over and over again throughout the Bible, Old Testament and New, God's Word encourages Christians to be concerned about their growth. That's right. We're not saved to set. We're saved to serve and we are given opportunities by God. We're challenged in our lives and how we respond to those challenges will determine if we grow or if we shrink and die. Uh, the psalm before us is a, from some period in David's life in which he was challenged and he realized that he needed to grow. But all of us, as we read and study the scriptures, we need to look at life from a spiritual viewpoint and realize the challenges for what they are. There are opportunities to grow, to mature, so that we're sharper and better servants in the Lord's vineyard. You know, one of the things as you, you look at this passage here in Psalm 39 uh, is, is that this is the picture of a person that is concerned about maturing in the faith. Um, and, and one of the neat things about this, this passage is, is, is that even though this, this passage is 3,000 years old, there are so many things here that are so relevant for right. a 21st century audience. Um, for example, uh, as you think about <clears throat> how we live and what we do, um, one of the things that the psalmist was, was concerned about was controlling his anger and, and how, he, how he communicated. And oh, how relevant that is oh, yes. to, to, our, to our world today. And I, I just want to share these verses here out of Psalm 39. 
And then Heath, I'll let you kind of react to this. Um, because <clears throat> as I think about as I think about our culture today, everybody's mad. At the top at, at just at, at a moment's notice, people can go from, from zero to ten in, in the rage and anger mode. That's right. And I've never seen a time like it before, but it just seems like the last few years that's the way things have gotten. That's right. Now, all across the you know, the spectrum, from every walk of life, it seems that intense anger, frustration comes out, not just in politics, uh, but in just about everything. Yeah, in everything. I mean, drive down the road and uh, right. make a mistake or something and watch the reaction of, right. of the other person. Here's what the psalmist said. I, I said, I will guard my ways that I may not sin with my tongue. I will guard my mouth with a muzzle so long as the wicked are in my presence. I was mute and silent and I held my peace to no avail, my distress grew worse. My spirit became hot within me. As I mused, the fire burned. Then I spoke with my tongue. So again, here you have a commitment out of the psalmist that he understands he's got to work on his tongue. That's right. That's right. And, and he's realizing also his anger is being stirred within him. And uh, anger comes from the heart, and the thing about the tongue is it is an instrument of the heart, and it's all too willing to reveal what is truly in our heart, and that's where it starts. We have to realize when we are becoming angry and realize that that is the time we need to control ourselves and, and clamp down on our tongue and not speak. In Genesis chapter 4, whenever God confronted Cain, uh, it says that Cain was angry, and the challenge that God gave to Cain there is either master his anger or his ma anger is going to master him. And the same thing is true with us. We can either learn how to control ourselves or we can allow our anger to control us and we end up sinning with our tongue. Uh, again, just, just think about what we see around us in the culture. Yeah. Um, one of the things, I was uh, had some uh, time yesterday morning early to do some studying and some thinking and I came across an article <clears throat> that I originally was going to use uh, for today's broadcast, and I was looking at the article on my phone, and then when I got here to the office, I couldn't find the article. <laughs> and I looked and looked. But anyway, the article was a, a couple of months ago. This does involve politics, but a couple of months ago, the, the press secretary for the president was uh, thrown out of a restaurant in Virginia. Uh, and the, the story was not so much about that it, it, as it was over the next few weeks, the restaurant had to close because of the reaction of people on both sides who were coming in feeling free to protest and complain and actually confront one another. And the article talked about the, the activity of these people and how they, they were talking to one another, how they were uh, putting each other down, and everybody felt completely justified in using awful words and disparaging the other people. And the last time I checked, we're all Americans. Yeah. <clears throat> we're all, for the most part, good people. Right. And right. yet uh, people allow their anger uh, and their passions to get out of control. We are a nation right now, it feels like to me, that are, is being driven by our emotions rather than allowing our emotions to be held in check by the decisions that we consciously make. That's right. That's something that's brought out in this psalm, that David was going to be very careful to think about what he needed to say before he said it. <clears throat> and the same thing is needed by us today in James chapter 1, verses 19 and 20. Let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath, for the wrath of man does not accomplish the righteousness or the will of God. Uh, one of the marks of maturity is the ability to think matters through before we speak. Yeah, absolutely. And oh, how so many of us have work to do on, on, on that. That's, uh, right. That's right. Uh, trying to engage our mind uh, before we exercise our tongue. You know, I see a lot of people joining in this morning, uh, watching, and we appreciate that. Some from Columbia, some from Florida, uh, some from other parts of the country, as well as here locally in Dayton. Thank you for joining us this morning, and we'd like for you to be a part of our discussion this morning. So we talk about marks of maturity for Christians and how 
they progress in their, in their life. You can comment below. We'll, we'll read your comment on the air. Uh, you can send us an email. Our email address is yourpathwayhome at kettering.church. Or you can call us, area code 937-434-8481. Well, Heath, one of the other things that I, I think uh, is important here is, is we talk about our anger and our speech is, is looking introspectively, looking inside, taking the time to, to, to give some consideration as, as to what is, is on our heart. Um, because really, that, that is... Th that's the source of this. That's right. And and how what what's controlling my heart? Uh, you know, is it is it the word of God, um, or is it the media that I, that I'm taking in? That's right. Um, or, or perhaps it's just our pride, and we're not going to let anything tame us. We're not going to let anything control us. Tell us uh, what we need to think or what we need to say. We're just going to act on our own and. Again, none of that accomplishes God's will. We, we have to put God in the center of our lives. If, if God is our co-pilot, we're in the wrong seat. God needs to be in the driver's seat in our life. Uh, that needs to be in our heart, and from our heart come the issues of life, including the things that we say. I, I love this passage, uh, Ephesians 5.15. Uh, and, and if we can put put this passage into practice, it's definitely a mark of maturity right. in, in our life. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. That's right. Um, that, that passage says a lot. We've got to, the, the, the responsibility is on us. Right, that's right. Uh, there, there, and there's, there's no excuses for it. We, we've got to take personal responsibility to watch what we say, keep our mouth shut. Um, you know, if you go back here into the text in Psalm 39, David talks about, I will keep my mouth uh, with a muzzle or a bridle. Um, uh, as, as, think about the, the imagery there. That's right. To, to, to clamp down, uh, to put something over your mouth, uh, that's the kind of control he's talking about, yeah. just as if it, he had been muzzled, uh, realizing how dangerous it is. Uh, one thoughtless moment, one thoughtless word uh, can pierce to the heart, can do much damage. And, and so the Christian needs to live with that control. And I like, I like what you said. It is up to us. Uh, when I talk with some religious-minded people, they convey the idea that God is just taking over their lives, that the, the Holy Spirit is guiding them in everything they do, and it's as if they put their, their lives on auto, autopilot mm -hmm. uh, or cruise control. And that's not what the Scriptures teach us to do. The Scriptures teach us to be in control of ourselves and to purposely live the way God has told us to do. And it's a challenge. You, it takes some work. You know, Heath, uh, there's a passage that I just thought of. This is uh, 1 Corinthians 9, uh, 27, um, where, where Paul, Paul is writing here. He says, I discipline my body and keep it under control. Um, <clears throat> that, that idea of personal responsibility, personal discipline, um, I, I think that sometimes we really struggle with that. We do, and, and what challenges me with that passage is if an apostle had to be concerned about that, how much more do I yeah. need to be concerned about, about controlling myself? Yeah. You know, so we, there are going to be times where we've got to learn to just keep our mouth shut. Uh, and, and think about, we're, we're just looking at public things today. Right. Public, public manifestations public manifestations of, of behavior, uh, things we see out in the culture, things we see out when, when people are driving or whatever, but think about how important this is in the home. Oh, yes. And how many family situations could be de-escalated uh, if, if we would learn to just keep our balance shut sometimes. That's, I'm going to be talking about that some this afternoon in the, the sermon I'm preaching this afternoon at Knollwood about ways that we trouble our home, and one of them is yeah. by mistreating one another. The, the husband is told in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, to dwell with their wives with understanding, 
to give them honor, mm -hmm. uh, not, not to be uh, upset at them, not to despise them, but to honor them, and that needs to be reciprocated. Children need to respect their parents in the way that they speak to their parents, and parents need to set that example before their children, the way they talk to their children. But that's right, so much harm uh, can be done in the home, and, and so yeah. much frustration and contention there in the home, and that would be alleviated if we would control, we would think about what yeah. we say. Thinking, keeping our mouth shut, thinking about what we're speaking. Uh, one of our viewers typed in an answer here, Proverbs 15, 1. A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Uh, that's a great passage that's right. to, to, to keep in mind. So all of these things kind of reveal our, our own maturity as we can learn to, to get a grip on these things. And look, not a one of us is going to be perfect in this. Um, it's... It's going to be a continual, lifelong challenge as, as we go forward, but certainly something that God calls upon us to do. That's right. That's right. And the great thing about God is that he forgives when we sin with our tongue and understanding brethren and friends do as well. Right. So. Absolutely. Let's, keep, let's kind of push on here in the psalm another mark of maturity, and this is something I think very practical, very relevant again, and that is the, the need to, to realize our own mortality. Because, right. uh, th again, this goes along with the idea that uh, we need to live in mind that we're not always going to be here. Uh, things, things are not always going to continue with us. We're, we're going we're gonna to go on away from here uh, one day and go into eternity. We need to be living, and think about if we live with that as a greater consciousness day by day, how that would affect the way we live our life. That's right. Um, That's right. So here's, here's what the psalmist says. This is Psalm 39, verse 4. O Lord, make me know my end and what is the measure of my days. Let me know how fleeting I am. Behold, you have made my, de my days a few handbreadths and my lifetime as nothing before you. Surely all mankind stands as a mere breath. Surely a man uh, goes out about as a shadow. Surely for nothing they are in turmoil. Man heaps up wealth and does not know who will gather. So those are some really, really powerful verses. I've used these in, in, in eulogies before in funerals. Uh, but uh, certainly a mark of maturity is to understand that we're going to have an end someday. That's right. That's right. That the way I act, uh, the way I respond, is going to have an impact on my life right now. Uh, but I'm not just living in this moment. I'm preparing for eternity. And I shouldn't be living just for life right now, but for what is to come. There is a judgment uh, that is there. Uh, and our life is fleeting. It is like a vapor. It won't be very long before it will turn cold and get close to your favorite time of the year, Matt. Yeah. Uh, and you'll step outside, and as you breathe, there'll be that vapor, and it's there for just a moment, and then it's, it's gone. gone. Yeah. And, and even the longest, richest, fullest life compared to eternity is just a vapor. We need to be thinking about something greater than just living in the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're we're going we're gonna to go on after this life, obviously. Um, but we, we get caught up in the here and now. Um, we get caught up in building and acquiring and making our lives comfortable and pleasurable here in, 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 this, in this place. And, and it, it, it is something that I think is, is really, really problematic. Right. Um, you know, when you look at the, at the, at the, at the passage here, the, the psalmist is talking about, help me to understand how fleeting I am. Yeah. Uh, we are frail individuals. Yeah. We, we really are. That's right. And we are living here for, for just a, a short amount of time. Uh, again, in, in life, we can make plans. And uh, there's nothing wrong with making plans, but as James chapter 4 says, we need to make them in light of what God's will is and the fact that, that there is someone greater in control than just ourselves. Because uh, we're not invincible. Right. Um, I, I think uh, 
uh, you and I are around the same age, uh, and I can tell you 20 years ago, uh, I, I wasn't thinking m about my end near as much as I do these days, and I'm not that old by, by a lot of comparisons, but I will tell you that the older I get, the more I begin to think about there's a day coming when I'm not going to be here. That's right. And even if I live the, the 70 or 80 years that Psalm 90 speaks of, I'm getting closer to that than I am to my birth. Right, so. right. It's, it's, uh, and we need to keep those things in mind because that will, that will determine a lot of the decisions that we make as we go through life. That's right. And hopefully more to, to, to drive them to be more centered around God. So again, we want to remind you as we move into the latter part of our program this morning that we're live and you can communicate with us this morning, share with us your Bible questions, your Bible comments. We'd love to have you do that. Uh, just comment on the line below. Uh, drop us an email, yourpathwayhome at kettering.church. Again, yourpathwayhome at kettering.church. Or give us a call at 937-434-8481. We'd love to hear from you. So, Heath, moving on in the psalm here, uh, one of the other things we've talked about, two marks of maturity already, controlling our speech and our tongue. We talked about helping us realize our end, that uh, there is a day coming where we're going to stand before God. Uh, and then the psalmist talks about realizing our deep need for God. That's right. You know, we're not alone in this life. Uh, I see survey after survey after survey anymore of this, is, this generation, this current collection of generations living among Americans right now, that we have the loneliest people. Uh, and to me, it's, it's almost paradoxical. Yeah. Uh, we have all these cool electronic devices that connect us more and more than ever before, right? Uh, and yet it feels like we just are within ourselves. That's 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 and it, it like you say it is puzzling. It is amazing how we can be so connected and yet willingly be disconnected yeah. from other people. Yeah, yeah. and I, I think one of the things that is coupled with that, uh, especially among our younger generations, where I see this happening the most. Uh, is is that maybe a lot of a lot of people out there in the culture have walked away from God? They don't have God in their life, maybe like uh, people in the past have had. That's right. Uh, we're becoming more and more of a secular culture, and we're seeing the fruits of that around about us. Mm -hmm. uh, suicide, what a tragic thing! Uh, drug abuse, people bouncing from one relationship to another. All of it in an effort to, to fill a void or, or out of despair that it cannot be filled, uh, the void in their life that is God-shaped. Yeah. Only God can fill that void, and only when we come to God, have fellowship with God, and align our lives with His will are we truly living out our purpose. You know, uh, the psalmist here talks about our deep need for God, and you know, life is hard. Life is, uh, it, I, I, life never goes according to our plan. I, I think the, the, the only thing that's sure in life is change. That's right. right? That's right. And, and a lot of things that come up uh, in life are, are not easy. And so the question is, where would I be without God? Right. And, and notice what the psalmist says here. Here's the psalmist. He's writing at a time of distress in his life. But he says, and now, O Lord, for what do I wait? My hope is in you. Deliver me from all my transgressions. Do not make me the scorn of the fool. I am mute. I do not open my mouth, it, for it is you who have done it. Remove your stroke from me. I am spent by the hostility of your hand. And he goes on in verse 11. When you discipline a man with rebukes for sin, you consume like a moth what is dear to him. Surely all mankind is a mere breath. And so one of the things that I see here in this is our hope is in God. That's right. And David, even when he was going through this hard time, and he acknowledged the fact that it was God's hand, it was God who was bringing uh, the, the harshness upon him, uh, he acknowledged his need for God that, God, that the trial was needed, and that God was the one who could help him through that trial. And God is the one 
that can help us through our trials. And we've got to, we've got to look to him and trust in him to, to do so. That's right. Um, every single day, um, uh, because if, if we don't have someone bigger than us to rely upon, we're going to be in a world of hurt. Uh, there's going to be despair, hopelessness, loneliness, and all of the things that go with it, and, and really many of the things that we're seeing in the culture right now. That's right. Just bearing the fruits uh, of secularism. Yeah. And see, this, the psalmist here talks about how without God we don't have any, any deliverance. Uh, God, God is the deliverer. Here's the psalmist writing in a stressful time in his life. Uh, and he knew God was the one that was going to be able to pull him out of that, to get him through. Uh, and that's one of the main messages of God's word. Our God is our deliverer. That's right. And, and we're talking about marks of maturity, uh, a Christian realizing these things and learning you know, it wasn't so long ago, as you, as you said, we weren't thinking about some of the things we think about. Uh, we don't rely on God, lean on God as much in our youth because we've got our strength. Uh, we've got our understanding. We, we've got our energy. The whole world lies before us. Uh, but as you learn and as life kicks you around a time or two, you realize that you can't do it alone and you don't need to do it alone, uh, that, that it works best when you let God in your life and when you put him in the driver's seat and, and follow his will in your life. That's yeah. where you have hope. That's where you have deliverance. Yeah. You know, not only deliverance from the trials of life, but our God is our deliverer in helping us be delivered from sin. That's right. And uh, that, that message is, is found throughout the scripture. Here in this passage specifically, though, it's talking about trials of life and, and getting through. And I know for, for all of our listeners, viewers this morning, uh, as, as we think about this, um, we look back, we can see where God has delivered us. Where would you be without God? And, and again, that's a vantage point of having some years behind you. Right. You can look back at that history and see, yes, God... God did help me there, and it helps to strengthen our faith. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And so the, the big thing here is to keep God in our heart, uh, to keep him where he needs to be. He is the one that will put us in the right perspective uh, in life, uh, understanding that we are spiritual beings. Where This world is not my home. I'm just passing through uh, where I'm, I'm looking ahead to what is to come. And that governs every decision that I make here in, in this life. Because without God, what is our life? What is the point of our life?